This is a CNN uh, video uh, interview with uh, Oklahoma Governor Mary Fallon. Uh, for those of you who uh, don't uh, know it, if you're black, you need to stay the hell out of Oklahoma. Um, there have been a lot of uh, shootings, uh, killings of uh, black people up in Oklahoma by police and uh, no investigations. The latest one that's out there is a black man that was uh, arrested based on a warrant for uh, non-payment of child support. He was in the Oklahoma Correctional uh, Facility for four days and uh, he was quote unquote murdered. The Oklahoma State Coroner uh, did an autopsy and said that uh, this guy was killed uh, obviously while inside of the uh, prison. There is video on his murder, but uh, the Oklahoma City uh, DA and police department refused to release the video, um, and they are uh, fighting a FOIA, Freedom of Information Act, uh, request for the video. So again, Oklahoma, if you're a minority, particularly a black minority, uh, make sure that uh, when you're crossing the border from Texas to Oklahoma, don't go much further than the casinos. And when you come out of the casinos, make sure uh, you turn around and come back across that border. Also supposedly on the short list, Oklahoma Governor Republican Mary Fallon, who joins me now from Oklahoma City. <laughs> Governor Fallon, thanks for being here. It's good to be with you. So before the horrific ambush in Dallas, the nation was focused on these two fatal shootings of African-American men, one in Minnesota, one in Louisiana. The former Speaker of the House, Newt Gingrich, he went on Facebook on Friday with Van Jones, and they discussed the issue of race in America. Take a listen. It is more dangerous to be black in America. It's both more dangerous because of crime and which is the Chicago story, but it is more dangerous in that uh, they're substantially more likely uh, to end up in, in the situation where the police don't respect you and where you could easily get killed. Do you agree with former Speaker Gingrich? Well, I think we certainly have a great concern in America with the black community about crime, about certainly our police forces, and of course we had a horrendous uh, terrible tragedy in Dallas this past week, but we should have justice for all and if there is any question that there's any injustice for black people, African American or anyone, then it should always be fully investigated. Now, I'll give you an example. Over the past year in the state of Oklahoma, we had a police officer in our city who had been accused of raping women as a police officer. And they had a hearing, they prosecuted him, and they sent him to prison. We had another reserve officer out of Tulsa, Oklahoma, who shot a gentleman, and he was prosecuted. He's in prison right now. Okay, it, it took 13 witnesses and victims of a rape in order to uh, convict uh, that uh, Daniel Hostclaw. He was the officer she's talking about. And then on the, uh, I guess, Ride along, uh, pay for play, uh, deputy. Uh, there was a video of him, and uh, his defense was he accidentally pulled his uh, gun versus uh, pulling a, a taser, uh, and it uh, was later discovered that he hadn't undergone any of the training that was signed off on uh, in his file. And the uh, chief of police, who had uh, received the pay for play and I mean a lot of pay for play, he uh, resigned uh, just before the trial uh, started. So, it, you know, she's hanging her hat on two things that it was absolutely unequivocally, uh, no ifs, ands, or buts that uh, those guys were guilty. But they didn't prosecute uh, the uh, cops that shot a uh, Hispanic American father uh, for no reason, uh, other than uh, him opening his, his mouth uh, regarding uh, his daughter. No prosecution there whatsoever. The family is suing uh, civilly, but uh, they decided that the cops were well within their rights to shoot this man who was unarmed, wasn't really, you know, jumping up and down, 
uh, was really uh, no threat of harm or, or injury to the police officers, and they decided to shoot him. And so I think it is important that we look at any particular claim of injustice, that we listen to the concerns of the black community, but we must also respect and honor our men and women who are serving in the police forces across our nation, law enforcement, who protect us and keep us safe. Donald Trump uh, released a video on Friday talking about racial healing. Take a listen. The deaths of Alton Sterling in Louisiana and Philando Castile in Minnesota also make clear how much more work we have to do to make every American feel that their safety is protected. Racial divisions have gotten worse, not better. And obviously you're supporting Donald Trump. I think there are probably some skeptical Americans hearing that message from Mr. Trump about healing the racial divide. Specifically, I've heard from a number of Latino Americans, Muslim Americans, Native Americans, Jewish Americans, African Americans, all expressing concern about some of the things that Donald Trump has said. Talk to them. How do you think he will be able to be a racial healer? Well, I think the whole nation needs to work together, and certainly as anyone that's our nominee, whether it is Donald Trump, whether it is Secretary Clinton, we all need to work towards unity as a nation. And understand that people are scared. They want safe homes, they want safe streets, they want safe communities, they, want, they don't want to be profiled, they don't want to be discriminated against. Everyone wants to be treated equal, with equal justice for all. Respectfully, Governor. You... Uh, right, you'll notice that she didn't answer the question. So he's going to try again. You didn't answer my question. Do you, do you think Donald Trump has campaigned as a racial healer? I think he is trying to campaign as a race, racial healer. I think that has been part of his message. If you walk, watch what he said this week, you know, he talked about how devastating it was for Dallas, how we need to respect our law enforcement, how we need to pray for those who are killed and those who are injured. And I think that is his intent. I trust him with his words. And I think we all need to move towards being uh, compassionate, loving, healing, but yet also respecting our law enforcement. You'll notice that she still didn't answer the question. She jumped straight into uh, Dallas, which was uh, basically the uh, shooting of the uh, the a murder of the five police officers. And, and that's the thing about uh, Trump. He makes people do stuff that I, that I believe they wouldn't ordinarily do. And when they are asked questions about Trump, they always pivot away from the original question over to something else.